I was flipping through some of my old memories from the 80s and I was looking through I used to write programs and code for the Commodore 64 just in my spare time for fun and I would map things out and draw stuff and one of the programs that I worked on was a Pac-Man game actually I had fully developed it from start to finish in assembly language I used a Commodore 128 and the Merlin 128 assembler this image right here sparked my memory which initially looks like I had the idea to where have a Pac-Man game where there was four maps where you could warp through here, here, and, and here. But that's not the game that I ended up, uh, the game that I ended up creating was simply one of these maps and um, I had decided back then, I had no idea uh, how to do the the patterns for the ghosts and how to make them move around randomly or uh, make their eyeballs return back to the ghost cage in the center but having said that what I decided to do was simply create a Pac-Man game using the map using one of these maps here and I decided to have to map out the ghost patterns hard-coded so that they would just move around in a hard-coded fashion but and yet still look random unless you play the game more than once <laughs> and uh, that's what I did and I fully developed it it was using sprite graphics it's been so long now that I don't remember much of the details about it unfortunately I know that I discarded the discs that I had it saved on never get rid of your discs it's a huge mistake never get rid of your old source code the only remnant that I have left of the game is this image prior to uh, getting rid of it I, I do remember showing it to my uncle the the fully done game and he he like shook his head was like you did that and I was like yeah why <laughs> and he was blown away by it and uh, nobody else uh, made that a kind of an impression for, for me uh, other than him uh, I don't remember showing it to my mom or anyone uh, else at the time I probably one or two of my friends saw it he had since passed away from lung cancer at the age of 48 in 1996 I don't know it, it was kind of like my little Howard Scott Warshaw moment I developed this game as a teenager and now it's gone and seeing this image is and getting back into the retro games and things and the Commodore 64 programming and the CBM program studio I thought it'd be fun to revisit this game and see if I can bring it back to a little bit of what I had back then I don't remember all the details from because that was 30 years ago but this time I'd like to improve it upon it a little bit uh, make the ghost move around randomly and add the logic to move the ghost eyes back to the ghost cage so I had the idea and what I'm gonna do is kinda of demonstrate, I'm gonna take one of these maps, I'm thinking this top one right here the top left and see if I can't start developing a game from scratch, a Pac-Man game that's using text graphics at first and then if I have the inclination at some point to further develop it with the sprite graphics but I'll never get it to where it's 100% arcade perfect and um, and there won't be any la uh, lick of originality in it <laughs> but um, it'll be fun, it'll be a nice programming exercise and it'll be very um, interesting to um, get into and show you that okay the first thing I wanted to go over was building the the map for the game and essentially what I did was I took that printout that I created um, 30 years ago and I just redrew the map and um, using this screen editor right here that's built into the CBM program studio so I've saved that already and I'm just gonna uh, open that right up here 
And so you can see, there's the map. Um, it's the first one that was on the top left. And what I made, a few little minor modifications. I opened up a warp tunnel right here, warp wall. Where the program can get into trouble is if you're using completely random patterns for the ghosts, they they could get hung up in areas like this where it can go up, down, left, right, up, down, left, right if it's completely random or in areas like this where it could end up going in a circle uh, where this kind of P-shaped tunnel is. You could, um, I, I have to, I'm going to make a few more modifications, just slight modifications to this um, in the next um, couple of months or however long it takes me to work on this program. So this is the map and what I did here, the program that I have in the background um, that I've started starts the map data at line 5000. So you can come up here and click export basic. Generate empty rows, generate whole row including trailing spaces. So any trailing spaces or any uh, whole rows that are blank, I want them included. And then start the program at line 5000. Hit OK. That generates the basic um, map data. Then you can copy it to the clipboard and then and then simply paste it into the program, is what I, which is what I did right here. So before I uh, get into the, the program, I'm going to hit F5 to execute it, to just to show you what it's doing so far. So as you see, I have a little spade that's moving around. It's completely random going across the maze. The one thing where it's not random is I have programmed it to not go in the previous direction. So you can see it's getting holed up in the, the ghost cage. So if you're going down, 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 it won't pick up as a random direction. If you're going left, 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 until it hits the wall, it won't pick right as a, as, as a direction. It will always try to go in another direction other than the previous direction. I don't have any checks for the warp tunnel so it'll probably crash if it goes through one right now. And it just goes on. Um, right now it's a for loop so it's just uh, going for like 500 moves before it stops moving. And there's no, it's just one ghost, there's no game here yet. It's just it's pretty much a proof of concept here. Just kind of, just using character graphics. So I'm going to close this and then go over the program. It's really a short program right here. You can see it all on the screen. Um, the bulk of it almost is this line 5000 is the, the screen data. So um, at the top of the program here I sort of have a random number initialization. Um, I don't know all of the techniques. I'm sort of picking these up as I go on the internet and researching online how to do various things and this was the command that came up when trying to um, initialize the random number generator in Commodore BASIC and I have on the next line I have a previous direction variable that I've um, set as L for left I have a ghost X position variable and a ghost Y variable the wall position. The wall is um, 160, which is, which is a reverse space. I do a print character string 147, which clears the screen. I go sub to 5000, which is a subroutine, calls a subroutine, which draws the screen. It prints all these characters that we generated on the screen design screen, on the screen designer. And at the bottom of the subroutine is a return statement. All go subs have a return, or they should. And then I have a for loop for i equal 1 to 550, go sub 1000, next i. And then I end the program. Now, subroutine 1000 is where the meat of the program is, which moves the first ghost, which right now there is only one ghost. So here I initialize my ghost string. I'm calling it g string. With what this variable is, it has all the directions, you know, one character for each direction, up, down, left, or right. Whatever the um, contents of this variable 
are set as, that means that the ghost can move in that direction. So if the variable g string is equal to ul, that means that the ghost is okay to go up or left. And that is determined through the following set of statements here, uh, lines 104 to 1, um, 9, 1, 1004 to 1090. The poke command right here um, changes character memory at position 1024 and pokes a space into it. So it's, it's putting a space in 1024 plus the quantity ghost y times 40 plus ghost x. Since on the Commodore 64 the screen is 40 characters across, I'm doing y times 40 plus x. So if ghost um, position ghost y is 10, it's going to go down 10. And if x is 10, it's going to go over 10. So down 10, over 10. The peak command essentially reads a position um, in, in memory. And what I'm doing here is I'm saying, give me in a temporary variable the position that's at ghost y minus 1, the position that's 1 above the current position. If that's not a wall and the previous direction is not down, then set the variable ghost g dollar equal to up. And then I'm repeating that. So that means essentially you can go up if there's if you can go up if there's not a wall there and if your previous direction wasn't down because I don't want the the ghost moving in the previous direction. Otherwise it just goes back and forth, you know, endlessly. And then we repeat that logic. So ghost minus 1 uh, plus 1 x plus 1 so a position to the right and then a position to the left with ghost minus 1. So by the time it gets from from position 10,004, 1,004 down to 1,100, it has built that string. That's all it's doing is building that G dollar string. So it knows it can go either up, down, left, or right. And then the next part of the this little program is to determine, pick it randomly from those from that those characters that are in the G dollar string. So just pick a random direction from there. So that's what this is doing takes the length of g dollar and randomizes it a random number between 1 and 4 and then uh, extracts a character from that if the mid string it's checking the mid part of the string at a position that it was just extracted randomly from comma 1 if that's equal to up then adjust the um, gy equal gy minus 1. If it's down, gy equal gy plus 1. If it's left, if it's right, it's gx equals gx minus 1, gx equals gx plus 1. I have a remark statement here that I didn't explain. This is just comments. So that I don't have enough of these in my, in my program, but just kind of tries to explain a little bit. Um, but they don't actually get executed. And then I poke the new position. So it's moving to a new position and it's putting that spade character which is oops, which is that 65. So the new position, gy times 40 plus gx. And it's always good when you're doing multiplication um, just to put parens in um, as a good practice so you don't get um, confused. Then we set the previous direction equal to that character, um, the 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 up down left or right, so we know which the previous direction is, so it can be used right here up in this area. So that's all this part of the program does, and and then there's a return statement right here at 1180, and so let me show you that again. I'm going to hit space and F5 to execute the program. And again, you can see it will move around randomly using the logic that I just explained. And it kind of gets stuck in the ghost cage area. There's little spots uh, that I'll have to um, clean up the code so it doesn't get stuck in. 
And right now the warp tunnels, it, it won't go through the warp tunnels. It probably will just crash if it goes into that section of, um, of the map. And I know it's a ghost. It's not supposed to be eating the dots. But um, this is just my way of knowing where the ghost moves. Um, eventually, um, I intend to translate this basic program into a similar language um, and eventually eliminate the graphic, um, the character graphics, and replace it with sprite graphics for the movements. Would be a long term goal, <laughs> depending upon how much effort I'm going to put into this uh, project. So let me close this. Like I said, I'm going to translate this into a similar language. So I didn't do some basic optimizations here, like the uh, mid strings are repeated over and over. I could have stuffed that into a, um, a variable like I did here. On I could have put 1165 up higher. Um, the multiplications are done repeatedly, uh, so I know that slows down program execution. But since uh, the target is to eventually convert this into assembly language, I'm just going to leave it like this. It's easier for me to understand. The reason why I have these two character variable names is because, at least in the Commodore Basic, you're limited to two characters. Anything past that, the, the compiler ignores it or the um, interpreter um, doesn't in interpret so it's uh, if you have GX a and GX B it's looked at as GX so in my next um, video I'm going to expand upon this logic here in the back I'm going to add more than one ghost and expand the program a little bit further than I've, I have here. But this is just a quick introduction just to show you uh, what's possible with a few short lines of code. You can kind of use your imagination to go from here um, to see, to imagine how, you know, where you could take it, you know. For me, since I lack creativity, I'm just going to see what I can do in terms of how, how close I can get it to be in arcade perfect. I'm not going arcade perfect, but just to make it look like the arcade Pac-Man. And uh, to me it's easier to use the character graphics to start with and I intend to eventually take these this basic program and translate it into a assembler. So I hope you enjoyed this and I'll talk to you soon.